There's some exciting news about the development of inexpensive genetic tests for breast and ovarian cancer. Dr. Stephanie Burnick joins us with the details. She's the Chief of Surgical Oncology, Oncology at Lenox Hill Hospital. Dr. Burnick, welcome to Arise America. Thank you for having so me. So happy to have you. How much? First of all, the, the big news here is that this genetic test now is affordable. The previous one that we're familiar with that, say, Angelina Jolie used to detect the BRCA1, BRCA2 gene, thousands of dollars. Absolutely. This is a couple of hundred dollars. Right. Why yeah. is this a game changer? Well, this is great because genetic testing is not always covered by insurance. Even though there might be a significant history, let's say on the father's side, the genetic testing that we now get and is approved by insurance really requires one or two first degree relatives that have cancer. But if it's on your father's side, you're already at second degree. So if you can get an inexpensive test, many women will opt to actually pay for the test and get the genetic testing done. I have to say, when I think of inexpensive, particularly if I'm buying shoes, I think cheap. So will this test be equally as accurate, equally as effective as the more expensive version? I think time will tell. I think it ultimately will. I think they're still testing it. Um, we have to try it out on a larger population. Uh, the problem with extensive genetic testing is that you often find variants that are indeterminate, meaning you you see a change in the DNA, but you don't know if it's significant. Okay, so we look forward to hearing more about that. Let's move right. on to our next topic, and of course these are all around the issue of cancer. There is something called the liquid biopsy, and it helps detect a certain type of lung cancer. Sure. Um, why is this exciting? Well, in the past, when you wanted to test or look uh, at how well a patient was responding to a chemotherapeutic agent in a certain kind of lung cancer, you had to repeat a biopsy, which is pretty invasive. Now what they're finding is these tumor cells probably release agents, these bioactive markers that we can actually record in the blood. So you can tell if a tumor is becoming resistant to the drug just by taking a blood sample. How does this technology work then? Can you explain that, how, how the, di the so, how, yeah, how so it works? So certain tumor cells will release biomarkers, and as they gain resistance to a drug, those biomarkers will either go up or down. So if you can measure that in the, those levels in the blood, you can tell if the tumor is, is changing, and maybe you have to change your chemotherapeutic agents. Got it, got it, got it. So is this as important for lung cancer in terms of being able to diagnose early? Is, is lung cancer more effectively treated when it's detected early, say like breast cancer and prostitute? Absolutely. And prostate cancer? Absolutely. Lung cancer is better treated when we can find it early. You know, we will probably move in that direction with this kind of technology where we start screening people by looking at their blood. So let's move on to this final, that's immunotherapy and uh, treating of cancers. The research has been there for a long time, a few decades uh, uh, as a matter of fact, but what are some of the ways that researchers are manipulating the immune system to fight a tumor? Sure, so some of the new drugs with melanoma are, uh, are working by using antibodies. And what they do, uh, if you have a tumor, it might release properties that downregulate your own immune system. What does that mean? It means it makes your immune system work inefficiently. So it'll, the tumor will actually tell the cell to turn off. So you have T cells that attack tumor cells. Tumor cells release agents that tell the tumor cell, the T cell, to stop working. If you can block the, reset, the signal from the cancer cell by releasing, uh, by blocking the uh, the agent, you, the tumor, the T cell will continue to work. So the antibody binds to the receptor where this bioagent from the cancer would bind, and now the, the bioagent can't bind there, and the T cell continues to work. Uh, okay, we're going to take your word for that. You may have lost a few of our viewers on that, but it's exciting, though. That right. is the new frontier in fighting sure. cancer. Sure. We'll have to leave it right there for now. Stephanie Burnick, thank you so much. Thank you.